Hi, today I'm going to show you the foundry process to cast uh, things out of aluminum. This is the part that I want to cast today. So I'll be running through the operations and showing you how that goes. And we'll finish up with uh, actual pouring it. So the first thing that you have to do here before you start is you have sand. And this sand here is called green sand. And you can see this is dry. It's way too dry. It just crumbles in your hand. Okay. Now over here, this sand here, it's the same sand, but when I grip it like that, it uh, shows the detail of my hand. And that's been moistened. To, mo to moisten it, we use a little bit of water. You sprinkle it on, and uh, then I'm going to take a shovel and uh, mix that in completely in there. So that's the first step that has to take place. Uh, and now we're ready to uh, do our casting. I'll show you the different things that we need for that. Okay, off. Okay, the first thing that you need, of course, is, is this molding board. And uh, that will have two holes in it. The next thing you need is, uh, is these little wooden boxes for actually making the mold. Comes in two pieces because we're going to have a top and a bottom. This uh, one here has these little pins on it here and I've drilled some holes in this board and that will sit, sit right over, sit down flat. The pins have to go through the board. The next thing is I choose my whatever you're going to uh, cast. In this case it's uh, going to be an indexing wheel for my wood lathe. Now when you make a pattern, this will be just a simple pattern, it's just one piece, uh, all the edges have to be slanted, slanted uh, towards this top surface here because it's going to have to be removed out of the sand. So we take that and we set that up so we can see the surface there. And uh, then we use some, uh, I got too much there, but uh, that's a parting compound. Just slightly, just going to coat the, uh, okay, I'm just going to set that in the, in the center there. Okay, now we're going to cover that with sand. I'm going to use this device here with, it's kind of a screen, it's called a riddle. And uh, then we're going to start putting our sand in there. This will uh, take out all the lumps. There you can see that it's kind of lumpy in there. But I can just take my hand and now I can just work that down a little bit. So I don't sum that up. Okay. We'll put a little bit more in there, just to make sure. Okay, that's done. I'll just use my fingers in there, push that sand that's uh, nicely put down there. Now, the rest of it is reasonably good. You can just fill it up with. Uh, unsifted sand. Okay. And then we'll take one of these fancy rammers here that I made on the lathe here and we'll start packing the sand and then make it tight. In industry they don't do this by hand, they have a vibrating. So this one is pointed uh, that will, will get right into the corners. But so I'm going to pack that down as basically as, as tight as possible. Okay. 
Oh, and I, I'm going to add more sand here, but I don't want a, a flat, real flat surface, otherwise it may not stick there. Back some more in there. strike off bar here because I want this to be flat but I'll just use I don't one of the things I forgot to check to see if I have one. So that's packed down solid right there. Okay and that's all there is to it. So the next step is going to be we're just going to raise this off and Our pattern, because it's so had so much thing there, it stayed right on the board there. Okay, so it's actually supposed to stay stay in the mold, but that could happen there. And but we're not going to stop the video. I'll clean that off, put that back down. Now it's flat there. Anyway, you got to see what that looks like. And we'll just stick this back in. Okay. There we go. It's back in. Now we're going to make the top part of the mold. That'll just sit right on there. Now we'll take our riddle and we'll riddle some more sand in there. some pins here, these called sprue pins, and uh, <clears throat> this is where we're going to use these so we, we're going to pour our metal through there. Now, I'm going to just push that down until it comes right up against the wood there. And in this case, I'm only going to use one and I'm going to pour the metal down in there. A lot of times you use two, one over here and uh, another one let's say over here you pour your metal in one place comes out the other place and then this serves as a riser in the center for con for the uh, con when your metal uh, cools and then it, uh, excess uh, hot metal in there goes down and completes the project but we're going to do this all in one shot here right uh, with use the riser as part of our sprue in the whole works there so I'll just pat that down a little bit like simple as that and uh, we're gonna, I'm just gonna add some more sand out of that as you can see this whole process doesn't take a lot of time. And then we'll pound this down. Gotta be careful you don't hit the, the sprewer riser. Drive it into the one down below there. I'll use this one here to get it pounded up against the edges so it doesn't uh, fall apart when I take it out. A little extra pound there. Got a little bit more sand, so I'm going to throw some extra sand in there. You don't have to fill this one right out to, up to the top, and you'll see why in a bit here. In fact, 
it's preferable not to uh, fill it up right up to the top. But these flasks, yeah, they're called flasks. It's been uh, many years since I've taught metal work here. I'm forgetting the names of the different parts there. Okay, that's nicely done. Okay, now, almost forgot something here, but well, I was thinking about that. Now this is the time, since you're using water-based sand, that you can poke some holes in here to let any steam out. And you do that before you take it apart, take the pattern out, because that way you would break off some of your mold inside there. Okay, that should be good. We used to just use a piece of welding rod. Okay, now it comes to the point we can take this top one off. It's all indexed there. And uh, you can see what that looks like there. Now obviously, this has to be removed. And then I'm going to take a spoon here. Just clean that edge up a little bit there. Okay. Now I'll turn it around and see what the other side looks like. Now I'm going to take the spoon and uh, make a nice little place there, funnel you might say, where I'm going to pour the metal. Okay. Pat any loose grains down. Blow the hole out, and we're ready to put it to ready to take the uh, pattern out. Okay, so I'll just shut the video down now and show you how to do that. Okay, I've got the uh, bottom part it's all cleaned up. I blew the excess off and where stuff fell on it. And now it's time to take the pattern out. Now, as you've seen from the first thing, just the weight of this, when I lifted it up, it came off. But you have more complicated patterns. They're going to stay in the mold when you turn it over. And then they have to go through a little process. You notice that I put a screw in the center here. I'm going to take this wrench and I'm going to start wiggling it. The more complicated your pattern is, the more you have to vibrate it. Well, you can pretty much see that you've got a little bit of looseness there. Okay. So that's well loose there. And it's just a matter of having some steady hands and pulling your pattern out. And uh, there's our part. There's our cavity. Blow any loose grains off. And uh, let's check that one. They have little bellows that you can do to do that as well. And then uh, put the top on and you have a completed mold. Casting metal is one of the oldest ways to form metal. It was done uh, in uh, Bible times. They cast the uh, things for the temple there. And, uh, probably even before that. So, otherwise metal is hard to work with, but you can make complicated parts very quickly by melting and pouring into a mold. So this method has been known for ages, way back there. Okay, so that's all ready. So now we're ready to uh, melt some metal and pour it and see what it looks like.